Blessings, everyone. This is CJ Espinal, your host here. And on my YouTube channel, we do everything from Christian films to uh, Bible teachings to Bible studies and just words of encouragement. And if this is your first time here, welcome. This video here is very important to me because as a young man, I had a tough time understanding purpose. And purpose right now is a very key word, is a very trendy word that everybody's using. Everybody's saying you have to understand your purpose, you have to understand why you're here. And this word purpose has a lot of meaning to it. This word purpose has a lot of pressure to it because as a young man, we're told basically that you need to be in your purpose. If you're not in your purpose, uh, your life is kind of uh, in shambles. And um, I just kind of want to take away that that stigma, that kind of religiousness that comes around the word purpose and give uh, wisdom, give clarity and understanding on what God says is true purpose and basically give you tools as a young Christian to walk this life and do it in a way that pleases and honors God. So first, I just want to reference this Bible verse here that's very, very popular. The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out now there's a lot of famous teachings basically teaching that purpose is within you and that you could draw it out and god is waiting for you to release or develop or bring out or refine that goal inside of you so that you can flourish and walk in purpose but i believe it's a little deeper than this i believe purpose goes to more of a more well-roundedness in our faith the issues with some of these teachings is that a lot of these teachings are very self-centered and basically you living your best life and god blessing you and you know just really lifting up you as the believer which is you know in its context and when it's done the right way it is a positive thing but there's a lot of money in the self-help christianity where you're basically consumed about yourself and you kind of forget about god and why you're here and you kind of use god as a crutch to get what you want and now more than ever christians today have kind of like a stigma of being lazy and this laziness stigma comes from christians waiting on god and i've been there i'm like god you promised me this i'm gonna wait on you and you know it's a fusion of you know being faithful to god and having trusting in god and allowing god to move so there's one idea there's one background there's one thinking perspective and then the other thing is that christians uh just feel disenfranchised in today's world they see money as a bad thing uh they see money as the root of all evil but the bible says the love of money so that just kind of disqualifies them all money's bad business is bad being in the marketplace is a bad thing it's just not true and then there's that wrestle and struggle with wanting to serve god basically give your whole life all your time to god but you have to work a career and a job and a lot of christians including myself has wrestled with this thinking like i, I have these gifts i have these talents and then the bible says if i don't work and if i don't make money you know it's not not a lot of good things that the bible says about a person who doesn't work and provide for his family so there's this wrestle there's this stress there's this anxiety there's this frustration built within the believer today um, around the word purpose. And I just wanna make it simple for you guys today. In my experience, my short 28 years of life, I realized that purpose comes down to four things. And when you understand these four things, your life becomes a little bit more clear, you have peace, and that clarity goes a long way because now there's purpose attached to what you are doing. So to get right into it, number one, glorifying the Lord and finding joy in his presence is purpose. I do not know how people who don't have the Lord go through everything that they go through without knowing God. It literally blows my mind. God has been my refuge. He has been my support. He has been my stronghold, my foundation, everything. He has been so much for me through trials and tribulations. But not only that, he has been my redeemer. He's been my savior. He has been my provider. He has been my healer. He has been all these beautiful things to me. And that all happened when I said yes to him. I received forgiveness. And I was made righteous by what he did on the cross for me. So now I have peace with God. So that, that hole in my heart, that, that void that I had has now been fulfilled. So ever since that moment, there's ups and downs in my life, but I've been at peace because what God has done. There's moments where I've not been happy. There's moments where I've been upset. There's moments where I've been disillusioned and going through a whole types of craziness. But God has given me peace by his Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. And like the Bible says in John 17, 3, this is eternal life to know God. And knowing God has been the best thing that's happened to my life. Point number two, 
is to love others and to have good relationships with people. Loving others is one of the most humbling things that you can do because you remove your pride, you remove your ego, and you die to self and say, this person's need is bigger than my ego. Loving others is putting on the nature and the character of God. When you act in love, you're acting as your father in heaven. Now, when you have good relationships and a good support system, a good friend group, that is one of the most key things that you can have as a Christian because you need people to hold you accountable. You need people to check you. You need people to give you support. You need people to encourage you. You need to encourage others. This is a give and take relationship that love is basically found in the midst of. Jesus gave two commandments, to love God and to love your neighbors. He summed them up and he made it very easy. Now, if you're paying attention, these are my first two points. It's to love and glorify God and to love others and have good relationships with others. Love goes such a long way. Life has a lot of ups and downs and you need a good support system and people around you that love you, that care for you, to be with you in those ups and downs and you could be with them in their ups and downs as well. Life with a support system, with a group of friends, is such a better life. God does not want you to be alone. God does not want you to be in your room locked up. God does not want you to be isolated. That is the enemy, that's the devil. That's the personality traits of the enemy. Jesus, when he was here on earth, he was amongst everyone. The devil was always by himself. And God just threw him the fallen angels. You know what I mean? Here, it won't be that bad for you. You know what I mean? But God wants us to be with a support system, with a group of people. And walking in love is walking in the nature of God. Point number three is to work. God wants you to work. Now, I know there's a lot of frustration when it comes to work. I know there's a lot of people who basically don't find fulfillment in their job or in their career path. Now, point number one, what I would say is, if you can work or be in a career field that you love, hats off to you. You're doing really good. Now, if you're not in that career field or that job that you feel fulfilled, that you feel like you're called to do and you don't love, the Bible calls us to work unto the Lord. We do that job as if we're doing it to the Lord. So that means that we have a certain standard to walk to in that job. Now, if you can't get out of the job that you don't find fulfillment in, number one, remember our fulfillment comes from the Lord. Number two, try to have an exit plan. I know there's bills, I know there's responsibilities, but build towards an exit plan so you can get to do what you love to do and you could get paid for it. And point number four, I'm gonna read the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Verse 13 says, now that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God, obey his commandments, for this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. You must worship and honor God. You must obey and follow his commandments because this is the purpose that God has for us. We must honor God with our lifestyle. We must honor God with our thoughts and our actions because one day we are gonna stand before him. And I believe that is the ultimate purpose for us here on earth. Everything else is vanity, as this book said, and everything in life will not fulfill you. But knowing that we are known by God and we know God is the most fulfilling thing for us. Because once we know God, our whole life changes. So I want to read one more verse for all my young people watching this video. Ecclesiastes verse 11, or chapter 11, verse 9, it says, Young people, it is wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in. But remember that you must give an account to God for everything that you do. God wants us to enjoy this life. God does not want this life to be burdensome. God loves us and he wants the best for his children. So we just have to be careful. We could do the desires of our hearts, but make sure that these desires aren't sinful. This is why we need to know God and know his word and obey his word. It all ties in all together. God just wants us to keep his commandments, to love him, know him, and be his representation here on earth. You may be struggling right now in your heart about what you wanna do. You may be being pulled this way, you may be pulled another way, you may have other people's opinions swaying you on which way you should go in life. But at the end of the day, God's purpose is the one that prevails. In Proverbs 19, 21, the Bible says here, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. At the end of the day, God does have a purpose and a plan for your life. Now it's our job to know God and try to understand what that purpose and plan is. In order for us to function the way God wants us to function, we must be aligned to his plan. Because if we're disaligned, this could bring frustration, this could bring resentment, this could bring a whole boat boatload of emotions towards God or even frustration within ourselves. So knowing the plans of the Lord and what God desires for us, God's standard for us, God's boundaries for us, this 
is a key to understanding purpose in life. If you guys enjoyed this video and have anything to say about this, leave a like and then also write down in the comment section what you thought about this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so we can get out to more people. And remember, God is with you no matter what. And in life, if you're looking for purpose, turn to him and he will give it to you. God bless you guys.